Okay, so this is uh, this is a plugin that, that should allow you to be able to uh, facilitate a communication between a Python script and allow it to communicate in a way that it, it can it can drive the functionality of things in Unreal, such as like you can control a character with it, you can run like uh, complicated neural network calculations outside of Unreal um, at runtime. It uses a uh, TCP socket connection. Um, just to your local PC. So uh, in order to use this, you will have to have Python 3 uh, point whichever version, I'm sure it should work. Um, but if you have any issues, this is actually built in 3.9. Um, but I don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of differences in most things. So anything 3.9 or up should definitely work, though. This is built in 5.1, but... I. Uh, I, you can use it in 5.2. This actual project is 5.2, so when you start it up, it may say these uh, plugins that are in here were built in 5.1, but there is just a benign error. Just click, uh, do you want to continue to try to load them, and you, you click yes, and it should load without any errors. Um, if you do happen to get any errors, just feel free to let me know, and, and we'll see. Um, or you could just take the project's plugins folder and put it into a 5.1 project, and it should work without any errors. But uh, the errors should be benign anyways. Um, so I'll leave this link in the uh, description in the video that we're doing right now. And um, you come here, just download this. Uh, you go to code. You can download zip, or you, if you use like GitHub or know what JIT is, you can just do a, a JIT clone. And I've already got one downloaded, so I just downloaded this, and that way we could do it together from scratch, essentially. And just extract it to whatever folder you want. And then when it's done, we'll open it up. And you have a little README, but it's the same one that's in the, the repository. So just open up the project. And like I said, it may or may not give that little benign. Yeah, see, so it's, it just gives this benign er error, but it, it really is not incompatible. If you click yes, it, it should load without any problems. I don't know how to upgrade necessarily to make my plugins work in a way that it doesn't give you the error, but it works fine so you should have any problems uh yeah there's a second one but uh, yeah and then we wait on it to just build it really quick which it shouldn't take but a second i mean if anybody knows how to to rebuild them for the other engine i would be much appreciative of you sharing the information with me if you could get with me um that would be great to know just how to recompile it for for like the one engine uh, version above it or below it or whatever if, if it's possible but yeah it shouldn't take me a second okay so it's almost loaded up now all right so this is the project loaded in um i've included uh just like a base in case you wanted to add your own complete code to the python script but i've also included one just to kind of show you uh this one right here it's just like a really basic actor that that any movement that it does once this starts will be driven by python and and the little icon here i'll show you how to use all this but so it basically uh, um we'll go for the the basics first and then we'll come back for the example in a minute but um we'll just create a new level save it it's fine now all you have to do is make sure that you come to the plugins folder and you go to the pi runtime utility and just grab this pi uh, blueprint python blueprint for the communication it's got a cool little python icon just make sure that there's one of these in your level somewhere doesn't matter where doesn't matter just as long as there's one there should only be one i don't know if it'll mess up with two but yeah so as long as there's one out there you can also like you could change the ip address which this is by default just your local pc um, you can also go into it and change the port. Um, but as as far as up right now, as long as you have that in the level, you can uh, go back and we'll make a new folder for this tutorial. I did spell. All right, and then we'll just make a new blueprint class to to interact with the Python script. Um, it can be anything that can run code. So any any blueprint will work. Um, so BP tutorial. 
test. Okay. So what we're going to do here is the this can be any blueprint and and all you got to do is at the very beginning of it on begin play you want to get a reference to that blueprint that we drug into the world so you need to get an actor of class node and then we will select our uh just type in python it should show to be the only one yep that one and then we can just make a reference to that so we can use it later on and just say python communication ref and then we'll just save that. And then, so what we're going to do from here is we've got our reference. Um, we're going to set up a couple of things. Like a, we need this to register. If we get a, a, re, a reply from our, our Python script, once we start sending data, there's a binding in the thing. So you can just do bind uh, data. Bind it, yeah, so it says bind invent to incoming data from Python. So what this is, is any time that you receive data from the Python script, this will be the event that triggers. And so we need to bind it, and then we'll just do a custom event, and we'll say on Python reply, and then it replies with a data string. So this will be all done. It, it goes from string. We'll have to send everything over in a string, and then uh, we'll decode it and everything. But all the decoding is already done, as far as like from bytes to string and string to bytes, all that's finished. It's just like. Our format, we'll have to format our, our floats and everything into a string, and then once we get it over to Python, we'll just have to use the same like format that we use to format it, to deformat it back into the, the floats and or whichever kind of variables we're going to use. So on here, we can just, for now, promote this to a variable. We can print the string so we can see it, just to make sure it's working when it comes in. And... Then we will just leave it there for now so we can chest this. That's that's all there is to receiving the uh, data. And then we want to, just for now, for example, like we could do a, uh, a timer by event. So we could just test to see if we can send the data to the Python script and make sure that that's working. So this will be all sending the data. So we'll make another custom event and send Python data to script All right uh, one second okay so what we're gonna do here is we're going to say out data and we'll rename the other one to end data instead so we know that the differences are which way they're heading but so we take our out data change it to a string type Get it, and then what we're gonna do is call uh, from our variable that we saved. Uh, we're gonna call send data to Python. So send data to PyScript, right? So that's all we're gonna have to do there. We pass this in. It's already converting everything, so that's all you have to do. So pass this in as what you want to send. Now, for example, like if you wanted to, I don't know, like we're gonna change it every so often. So We'll, we'll do like a list of different things it could be. That way we can see it actually changing from one to the other. Um, so we'll do um, list of data strings. And then we'll just change it to an array. And we will compile and add a few things to it. So whatever you want to name. So I'm going to do hello. Then I'm going to do world because it's just a stereotypical thing for people to do in their programming for some reason. Um, then we're going to do last message, and then you don't have to do all this. This is really just for, for testing to see that it's going to, you know, update in real time and also send back in real time. So this is just more or less like for fun, um, to show its capabilities and it and that it works. Right. So what we'll do here is we'll do a, uh, get node for getting one of the elements we will take this and promote it to the uh, index and this will be what we get so what we'll do for the index is get index we'll increment it each time set it to negative one by default so that it starts at zero 
so this will be the very first element and when it increments it it'll add it one to it it'll set it to zero which will be the first index in the array so we'll set it to increase one time each time it runs through um, if so if this is greater than the length of our array though we won't do that so length so we make sure that uh, we don't go out of range in our array while we're doing this so if it's greater than we're going to just set it back to zero and then run it so so if it's greater than we need to set our index to zero and then hook it up like normal so that's the only thing you'll have to change there so here and here now what we're going to do is we can set this as our out data but i just happened to make the variable before i thought about doing it this way but it's fine so we'll just set this as our out data and then we will put this over because we already have our out data hooked to the simpile by data script so like there's there's ways you could do this like so for example text i think to text would be easiest because you are you're allowed to actually do something like format you can actually do the format here and we could say for example like uh we wanted to get the x you know of the character's location which is what on on the example i'll show you in a minute it actually has so we get the x um and then we'll do like x location anything you put inside the brackets will be replaced with the uh, whatever it's plugged into it in a second so we'll just do y and then that that's fine that's not and then when we hit enter it'll give us a chance to put this in so that's just an example of how you could format it if you wanted to um that way when you get over to the python script you could say like split it at at the x and the, and then split it at the y also and then use this value as a float that's how the other one is set up also um so it's just a little easier but we'll do this for now just for show all right so that's all we need to do um and then we'll just need to drag this into the oh yeah sorry we got to set a timer so we'll do it every half a second because i think that i wouldn't go over half a second as far as like how many times you would do it uh, repetitively and how close they can be together I've tried less but I don't know like it didn't seem to do very well like not all the data got across every time so it caused a few errors so I, I think I think 0.5 was the best that I've got without actually having errors with it so what we're gonna do is just put this into the world also and we are going to simulate oh yeah uh, my bad first of all we have to go to our plugin and start our TCP server so we go to our, our plugins folder in the repo that we downloaded we go to the Python scripts and we are going to open the tcp server.py which is open it with python and so this is said server starting waiting for connections right so as long as this is running first before we hit play then we should be all right but if you if you do this afterwards uh, you, you it's probably not going to work correctly so now we can actually go hit simulate and we start data sending was false Okay, so I realized what happened is I forgot to, after we bind the uh, event, is it to actually call start Python connection. So that was something I forgot I had to do, but that's all the problem was. It should be, haven't tried it yet, but we'll see. Um, should be fixed now. And let's just double check that our script is running. All right, that's running, and now we hit play. Yay, there we go. So it's it's actually going. So we can actually check this in Python also to make sure. See the data strings coming in as what it should. So this is how you would send data from and to um, Python from Unreal. Um, it should work at runtime just fine. Um, just have to package it with the. Uh, yeah, it's not the most ideal because I know that you'd have to start the TCP with the Python. But if you're running Python for machine learning and stuff, that's that's more or less like, uh, as far as I could find, the best way to go about doing it was, uh, if, if there's any better ways, I would love for um, someone to help share that information um, because I'm always looking to better this or to better the way that I do it. So, I mean, as far as I could find, there wasn't any plugins. So this is something I made because I was needing to, to try to drive a car with a neural network and I was able to do that. So, I mean, it's working. 
So now that we have all this working, we can stop. We don't need to do that. And we can go try the other one out. So now that we see that one's working, you get the idea that this is all it takes. Like literally, I'll, I'll leave this really quick. I'll, I'll go do this really fast. So um, probably wouldn't hurt. I'll make a I'll make a link to this also in the project and also in the uh, the description. So this will be like using Python in time plugin. So expiration never. Yeah. So that's <clears throat> sorry. So that that should be fun. And then I'll leave this link that it generates. And you can if you have never used this, you can literally come here. And I would I would use this more as a reference than I would to just copy and paste because when you copy it, it's gonna not carry over these variables like this. You'll have to redo, and it's gonna be a lot of errors because the custom events don't carry over. But um, you could literally copy and paste this with the Control C and Control V. Um, but I would I would more or less just come in here and look and see that you need to get a begin play get actor class and these things are, are more or less like needed. Um, and in the blueprint, you're gonna have receiving the data, sending the data. All the way up till this is not actually something i mean that would be a good thing yes but from here over is just for show like honestly um to show you how to do what you would be sending uh, you don't need actually any of this part you do need you do need this though so i'm gonna put this link in my notepad really fast so i don't lose it and then we'll go play around with the uh example and see how this works so we can close this. We'll go back to our, <clears throat> we'll go back to our other um, map really fast, and then find where I put the map. Make sure this one. Um, we won't save that. So this one we need to use the other Python script because I put more functionality into it. Um, just to kind of give you an example of what you're able to do with it. Um, so this one is. Uh, it's going to show the same, but it actually has some functionality built into the actual Python script. And then once we hit play on this, we can see that the actual sphere there is moving. That's 100% controlled by Python as far as the movement of it. Um, we can see this if we go to our Python. You can actually see where it's being read that it is currently at. And then the way I have it set up is just it's really just choosing a random movement. So it's probably why it's stuck on the ground right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, but it's, it's it's completely controlled. The movement is by Python 100%. So every bit of that. So I mean, it's just an example that you can actually do things like control characters, so that you can run neural networks and feed the information in. And as long as you don't run over about like half a second within within each time that you send the data, you could do like like I was doing line traces on uh, like on the vehicle. I had three line traces, uh, two for the sides and then one for the direct front. And I would send in those three values along with the speed of the car um, over to Python every half a second and, and have it process it in a, in a small, simple neural network um, that was trained prior after um, a little bit. But uh, it would send the data back. And even, even then, it was still running good. So anything about like half a second tends to, unless it's just hugely computational, it's probably going to be safe to, to chest out. I mean... You could try anything you want, really, but that's the only thing. I've, that's as far as I've took it. I'd love to be able to see some cool projects made in Unreal with uh, reinforcement learning, especially. Uh, we're working on that. If anybody else has any kind of projects like that, please feel free to, to leave a comment because I would love to check it out. I, I don't know why, but I just really love reinforcement learning and the thought of the actual agent itself playing and learning to play it on its own. So... That's pretty much all of the tutorial, or uh, I guess if there's anything that you need, uh, if I'm always on Discord. You can always catch me on Discord. Um, my my username is the same on Discord as it is pretty much everywhere else. It's just Fort Bonatar now. Um, feel free to message me on Discord, and I'll get as soon as I see it. I'll, I will try my best to see what we can figure out about if you have any issues or if you have anything you want to discuss or anything that might benefit the project or any just just any cool things in general that would be interesting that would be great but um appreciate you